Father, that if there's one here that doesn't know uh, Jesus Christ as Savior, that today they'll come and trust Him. Father, we pray this morning for the young folks who are here as well. It's great to see them today. Father, I pray that you'll burden their heart, Lord, you'll guide them, you'll protect them. Keep a hedge up about them, Father, as they begin their lives and try to figure out what you would have them to do. As you mentioned earlier, uh, Father, you have, you have a plan, Lord. They have a blank slate in front of them. So I pray, Father, they'll seek you, seek your guidance in that. Father, you'll do great and mighty things with them. Thank you for Pastor Dale and his wife, Lord. We just ask God to bless him, bless them, bless the church and their efforts and their work. Father, we ask that you just bless them the next few moments. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You know, the word of God, Brother uh, Dwayne Gibson, the missionary to uh, Mexico, I think it's been 30 some odd years. And uh, his comment to me always is the word of God does the word of God. And uh, that is absolutely awesome. And I need to keep that in my heart and mind and hope that you remember that today. I want you to look at this verse this morning. You know David, who David is. David was, uh, was exactly God's heart, basically. David understood God. David had some experiences with God. And so what David is doing here, he has made this comment in this verse because he has he's regarded some things in his life. He has come to realize some things, as you and I should, as we get older and we more experienced as Christians and we get down the road more, we should really um, be able to put some things together in the heart and life. So he's done that. David's learned from his experiences and he's been able to learn about God and what God is and what God does and what God doesn't do and so on and so forth. So you and I, if we get to a point in our Christian life, we don't know everything, but we know what God proves up. We know what he doesn't prove up. And we sometimes say, well, you know, I don't know if God really gets that or not. Yeah, we do. We actually know what he does, what he thinks about that. We just try to, to make it go our way sometimes. But I want you to notice what David said. He made these comments because all the things he's going on in his life and the truth of his word. He knows uh, some things about God. I want to share that with you this morning. We'll try to be brief about that. But in first part of uh, first part of verse number 31, he said, as for God. He's made that statement. As for God. Look what he said about that. His way is perfect. Amen. That means God makes no mistakes. Right. That means you don't have to question what God says about something. If God's way is perfect, then he's perfect. And, of course, David is making this statement. He has learned that. He's experienced that in his life. And so I want you to hold your finger here. We're going to come back. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm sure your pastor has been there on different occasions. But I want you to notice, if you can get Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 right, you can get about everything else right. Right. You get a hold of that. Well, I want you to look at it. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Absolutely. Right. You, that, everything falls into that verse. Everything hooks into that verse. All of that is basically security for you and I. We know that if God did it, God did it in the beginning. It goes into Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. That's the foundation for everything we know about God. Everything we think about Him, all of our experiences as well. <coughs> if you'll notice that word, in the beginning, God, you know what that is? The Hebrew word there is Elohim. That means basically the Trinity, a triune God. And so it's God that means strength. It means all three God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, what does that mean? That means it's the triune, the trinity of God. So in the beginning, God, that means that Jesus was there at the foundation. That means that the Holy Spirit was there at the foundation. That means God was there at the foundation. So David, in his statement back in 2 Samuel chapter 22, says, as for God, he's saying the same thing. As for God. He's in that place. So he has strength. It's trinity. And it appears over 2,500 times in the Old Testament. If you ever wonder who God is, that's who he is. Amen. That's him. And so David's making that statement. He's making that comment. As for God, his way is perfect. So you could say, as for your pastor, or for me, or for whoever, our way is not perfect. Right. Because we're not God. Amen. We have our faults. We will disappoint you at some point. If we have it, we will. Yes. We just pray that you forgive us and, and pick us back up or whatever. And the same thing, vice versa. We disappoint each other all the time. We just have to remember that we are not perfect. We are not God. But God is. 
And so the second thing I want you to notice, now if you go over to John chapter 1, verse 1, we'll be back there as well into um, 2 Samuel. But I want you to notice in John chapter 1, verse 1, we're not going to take time to go through all that either, and I'm sure your pastor's been there. But you and I have to remember this, who Jesus Christ is. And look at verse 1 in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know who that is? Logos. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Word. He's the living Word. And so you and I need to remember that. When you read your Bible, you are not just reading a book. You are reading the book. Amen. See, the Bible is so important to you and I that it is our foundation for life. It's foundation for our death. But who do you trust in when you die? Dr. Phil? No trust in Oprah when you die? That's not going to work. You're going to walk. Trust in some Hollywood celebrity with their some type of experience. You're going to, in their interpretation, I'm amazed sometimes when you see things that they've interpreted as what death is like and what all that is. They have no clue. They don't understand it at all. But through Jesus Christ, we know what that's about. But the Word of God, Christ is true. He's from eternity past. And you think about that. He's not just the beginning. He was in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. Who's the Word? Jesus Christ. And so that's who He is. Jesus is from uh, eternity past. He is the incarnation of God, Christ, of course, and Jesus is deity. He is the Word. He's it. So they go back to 2 Samuel. Well, I want you to think about that now that we've looked at all that. And so when David makes that comment, as for God, his way is perfect, now we get a whole new perspective. We're talking about Elohim. We're talking about God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Logos. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Again, a portion and part of the deity. So, what, so when we say as for God, that's who we're talking about. As for God, his way is perfect. So David made that right off the bat in his mind that as for God, his way is perfect. So if you settle that, you understand that God's way is perfect, you don't have to worry about God's way. Now if I tell you to do something that I'm going to do a particular thing or go a different direction or I say, well, this is how we do it at seat line or we're going to do this on that project, that may not be the perfect way because I'm, I'm flawed. I'm not perfect. My wife thinks I am, but I'm not. <laughs> you guys don't believe that either. She <laughs> but when David made that comment, as for God, his way is perfect, that means that everything God does, establishes, and says, and whatever he does and how he does it, is perfect. You don't have to wonder about it. And so when we have that in our heart and mind, so when he made that statement, as for God, his way, his way is perfect, that's its foundation for what he's getting ready to say again. I did a thing before we move on to the next one with the alphabet, and I would encourage you to do that. Um, a through Z to come up with some things for God. He's the Almighty Creator. He's the beginning. He's the conclusion. He's the deliverer. He's the everlasting one. He's the faithful one. He's the God of the fatherless. He's the Holy Spirit, the great I Am, the great Judge, the King of Kings. The Lamb, the Master, the North Star, the Omnipresent One, the Power of the Cross, the Quiet One, the Righteous One, the Sustainer, the True One, the Unchanging One, the Verified One, the Living Word, and for X, I put the X-ray in your heart because I had no idea what the X would do. That's a hard word to find. And then Y, the yoke bear, and Z, the zenith of the church. He's the power of the church. Amen. And that was just a little simple thing with the alphabet. So we start trying to describe who God is. There's absolutely no way to do it. It just goes on and on and on and on. So when David made that comment, as for God, his way is perfect, he set the foundation for that because, okay, what do you do with that? So then you've got God is perfect, and so you don't have to question that anymore. You don't have to revisit that anymore. It's settled. It's set. It's there. There's no, you don't worry about it. That's the foundation. God's perfect. So then we move to the next thing. Notice what he said in 2 Samuel chapter 22. Verse 31, as for God, his way is perfect. And then he said, the word of the Lord is tried. See, David spent some time with God and through events in his life that he knew that the word of God was true. His word 
has been tried. That means whatever God said has been proven. It's been tried. It's been brought about to see what, what is truth or not. So that means the Word of God. We don't have to turn there, but in Psalms chapter 12 it talks about the smelting and all that. And so it's been purified. Can you imagine that? The Word of God has been purified. That's why you read your Bible. You can trust what it said. It's been tried. It's not our first day on the rodeo. It's not our first ride. This Bible has been proven. The Word of God has been proven since Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Amen. So we don't have to prove it. We don't have to decide is it true or not. We don't have to do that because it's already been proven. It's already been tried. And so the Word's been smelted. It's been tried by fire. Yeah. So David as he makes that comment. He's recognizing that the Word of God has been tried by fire. It's been proven. It's been tried by promise. So what do you mean by that? What about all the promises he made to Moses and Abraham and everybody else down through the Old Testament? Did he do what he said? Absolutely. Did he do it like he said he's going to do it? Absolutely. So it's been tried by promise. It's been made. So all the, so we have the foundation that God is true. His way is perfect. His word has been tried. And so we're seeing that it's been proven. It's been true. And now how does that work? If you, you have somebody that comes to mind that you know is as honest as the day is long, if they tell you something, they're going to do it. If they make a commitment to you, they're going to keep it. And on the other side of that coin, you've got folks who tell you something and say, no, nah, doesn't matter. Well, my boys came, called yesterday, and I know my boys, said, I want to come over and mow your yard. Well, that's okay. But he didn't get there until four the five o'clock and five thirty. I'd already moved the yard. I knew he wouldn't have come until five and five thirty. It just all the things that happened. It's always something happened. So I knew that's kind of his lifestyle. But when you have somebody that you know if they're gonna be there at a certain time and they've proven to you that they'll be there at a certain time, then you count on that. And so the word of God's been tried, it's been proven, so we can count on what it said. Amen. Because it's got God as the foundation, and David's making that comment that's been tried by fire. It's been proven. I do want you to go to Matthew chapter 28, verse number 6. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 6. <coughs>
You say, well, how do we know that? I blah, blah, blah. We just go all these kind of directions. But well, I can tell you, as for God, His way is perfect. No question about that, right? No question about God's way being perfect. Okay, then we come to this. His word has been tried by fire. So there's no question about that. He has proven everything he said to the just right to the T that he said he was going to be. He has risen from the dead, just like he said he was going to. So when he rose from the dead, he put the stamp on it to prove that everything he said was true. Everything that was prophesied was true. Everything Jesus said was true. Everything the Old Testament prophets said were true. Everything God said was true because it hinged on the resurrection. Man. So now his word's been tried by fire. So now what? That means, if you're with me, that anything he says that's going to happen is going to happen. Right. There's no question that there's no room for well, I wonder. There's no wonder because his word's been tried by fire. God's way is perfect. So that foundation that you're sitting on for what comes next is absolutely no way, no room, no place to even question what's going so I want you to look, if you will, Revelation chapter, well, look at verse, or chapter 19 first. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And keep in mind, this is his word. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Verse number 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Verse number 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written into the book in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Is there any reason to doubt that's going to happen? Absolutely not. It's going to happen. It's got to. I want you to look back up verse number 12. And I, and I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God, and the books were open. What well, books are those? There are books that you're, every item of words being recorded that you say, your thoughts, your actions, all those things you think you get away with and you don't get away with. And you're going to give an account for them and send judgment for them if you don't cover that with the blood of Christ. Amen. The lost in the world that said, yeah, well, we're just going to hell and have a party. Ooh, no, no. It's going to be totally different from that. Those books are going to be those books of works revealing what you did, what you said, where you went. And I believe one of those books is going to be the Bible, mm -hmm. the Word of God. So you're going to have a book there if you don't receive Christ as your Savior. There is a book that's got everything you said, thought, and did. That you, all, your whole life is in that book. So you, you're going to be judged according to that. Say, well, what about Hitler? What about this? What about that? They're all suffering the same. In hell they are. But this is the white throne judgment. This is where they suffer for eternity. If you notice, death and hell was cast into this as well. And so all those things, what they, the work they did, they will give an account for. And then the Bible is there to show that God gave them a plan, God gave them direction, and anything they say, well, what about this, what about that? And he'll refer to the Bible. It's right here. I've given you instructions, I've given you direction. You're guilty, 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 guilty. Listen, don't, don't hear that. You don't want to hear that. And then there's another book open, and you'll see in there it says, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. But see, verse number 15, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You know how you avoid that judgment? Your name is in the book of life. Where does that book of life come from? The shed blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. Jesus takes that, puts your stamp your name in the book of life, and it doesn't come out. There for eternity is secure and it's in that. So you're not, you need to remember that. So the word of God's been tried, it's been proven, and so that's coming. And it, of course, for, uh, if you notice some of those things as well, we will see Him judge. It's coming. So the word of God is absolutely true, it's absolutely proven. Now go back to 2 Samuel. We're going to look there again. We're almost done. 
2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 31, as for God, his way is perfect. We've established that. God's way is perfect. Who we have? We know who we have. And then we just talked about the word of the Lord is tried. The proven. It's absolute. People say there are no absolute. Oh, there is one. It's all the word of God. Man. It is absolute. You can't get away from it. I don't care if you close it up and put it on your desk or put it in your closet. You cannot get away from it. There was a lady down in uh, South America, I believe it was in Brazil, that uh, they were giving out Bibles and she thought, well, I'd like that one. And they're going to have a book. I'll take one. She couldn't read it. But she took it home, put it on her table. So she had a book. She took that book. She'd go through her house and that book, just like she's drawing her to it. She's like, yeah, book. Stop that book and did it. She had a couple of weeks and she moved it to another room and same thing. She walked by the room and just like a drawing her to that book. So she took it back to the missionary and said, I know what there is about this book, but it just keeps kind of pulling me toward it. Can you tell me what's in this book? So he took that book, opened it up, and led her to Jesus Christ, took her down the Romans Road and led her to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. She received Christ as Savior. And she said, Can you teach me that? So she learned all those verses to lead someone else to Christ. She took her Bible in her arm and she went out and started leading people to Christ. So Amen. Said, what's in this book? So see, it's not the ink or the pages, but it's the message and the words of that book, which are the, is the word of God. Yeah. That makes a difference. So the we know about the Word of God, what difference it can make. Now let's look at the last thing. As for God, His way is perfect, the Word of the Lord is tried, but He is a buckler to all men that trust in Him. The word buckler means basically shield for your faith. These are shields in salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. We talked about that. We'll go to Hebrews chapter 10. Who's his right hand of the Father right now? <coughs> But in his life, Jesus Christ is cured for us eternally. Listen, you know, we, we don't have to be worried about this world. We get upset when you hear the C word. When you get that news from a doctor, you're like, oh, it's okay. I heard it. I don't know how I know it. I have some friends who are doing it right now. I know what they think. I know what they feel. I've been through some of that stuff. Well, you just don't. You think it's over. But then there's always that little nudge in your heart that God is there, so whatever comes is fine. You learn whether you have faith or not. When you confront your own mortality, you determine what kind of faith you have, whether you truly accept Christ as your Savior. These are shield in life and faith and in, in death. He's who we trust. It's Jesus Christ. He's our shield of our faith. He's, and David is making that comment because see what he learned is that as for God, his way is perfect. So if his way is perfect, we got that settled. There's no question. There's no reason to go back and visit that. There's no appeal to that. There's no question of that. That is just absolute. Then we come to the next part. His word has been tried. There's no question about that. It's absolute. Just like he said he's going to do, he did it. Just like it's going to come, it's coming. And so after our faith is built off of, and so then David makes his comment that he is a buckler to all them that trust in him. We put up the shield of God in front of us, our shield of faith. Why do we do that? Because we know the foundation. We know the word has been tried. So we can stand on that because behind us then, we have God's way is perfect. The word of God is true. And so then we have that in front of us, and that's behind us. That's our foundation, and that drives us forward. That's why you have eternal security. Why do you have that? Because what the Bible says. Amen. Not a mammal pathology doctrine. It's what the Bible says. Right. A lot of mammal pathology doctrine out there. But it's not in this book. It's not true. It's what God said. That's absolute truth. And so we've got to hang on to that. Now as we close, first thing. His way is perfect. No other name. Most said, who do I tell him? And Satan said, I am. Well, think about that. There's no greater name. What do you say? There's none, none other. When you tell someone your pastor wants you to come to the church, 
There's not a bigger name. Now, of course, the Lord, not even none of y'all understand that, but he's, he's the guy that's here. So when we talk about God sent us, who sent you? What well, God sent you. Right. Well, who's God? Well, he's God. So that's what Moses encountered. Him. Who God tell him? The I am. And that's what David said. Ask for God. His way is perfect. And secondly, this morning, his word is has been tried. His word is absolute truth. I have a nephew who has decided he's an atheist. Now, I don't know if he's atheist, agnostic. I know he's nuts. I don't know that. <laughs> but I, asked, you know, I said, do you believe that? He used to be in church. I said, do you no longer believe that the Bible is the word of God? He said, nah, that's a bunch of stories and fables. I'm like, oh. What do you think about Jesus Christ? Do you think he's the only way to salvation and that he is the son of God and he paid for our sin on Calvary? Now nah, we'll do that. He said, you just secured yourself an eternal destiny if you don't receive Christ as Savior. <coughs> He said, well, I don't really believe the Bible. I said, well, let me give you this verse. For the wages of sin is dead. You ever seen anybody die? See anybody getting out of this world without dying? No. Well, where's your proof? For the wages of sin is dead. There you go. That's it. So you've got the proof right there. And you build from there. I don't know. We hope that he gets straightened out. I think he went to college and messed him up. But his word's been tried, it's been proven, it's true. And his shield is the blood of Christ. Man. Listen, Jesus, he is our shield. You need to run everything through him. Everything you're going to do, everything you're going to think, everything you're going to say, every place you're going to go, whatever decision you make, you need to run it through him. He's our shield. And you need to know that he is your Savior. Listen, without him, we're doomed. There's no getting out. There's no other way. There's nothing other. No other way. There's no other God. As for God, His way is perfect. There's no other word. You say, what about all these other this and that? And so and so said that. There's only one. So if it doesn't line up with God, and it doesn't line up with this Bible, then there's a problem. Listen, the devil likes to create counterfeits. He likes to distract you. He likes to rob you of your joy, your security. We have it in the Word of God. We have it through Jesus Christ. So we need to hang on to it. Let's read that verse one more time, then we're done. As for God, His way is perfect. The Word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in Him. My question to you this morning is, are you trusting in Him? It doesn't say trusting in yourself. It doesn't say trust in well, my experience this or that, and we do that, that's a whole other message, but your foundation is your faith. And that's where David was at. David had learned these things. Have you learned them in your life? Do you know that God is perfect? Do you know His Word has been tried? Are you using Him for your sin? <coughs> if you're not, you can check your heart this morning. And then this morning, make sure you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. Do you know that you're a one heart from eternity? Just one. If that heart who quits, you're on your way. You're on that journey. So make sure you're going to heaven. Make sure you know Christ as your Savior. Let's stand. We're heads bowed and eyes closed. If they make your way for the invitation, let you think about this. Number one, as a Christian, do you know God's way is perfect? Do you live like His way is perfect? Do you live like His way is perfect? Trust God's word and you believe in God's word. You can know that that's where your security is at. The devil will throw everything he wants to at you. So the pastor, they even said this morning in Sunday school, when the devil threw something at Jesus, what did he say? He said, it is written. God, God knows. You know. Holy Spirit lives within you if you're a Christian this morning. He, he knows. You just got to trust him and build your faith. He is our Luckily, he's our shield. Then this morning, you know right now whether you know Christ as your Savior or not. You know right now whether heaven is going to be your home. You know that. I don't have to get you that because there's a big emptiness inside of you. There's a big question inside of you. So, well, I'll take care of it next week or next month. You need to take care of it today. But that knocking on your heart is not the devil trying to tell you to get saved. That will be the Lord telling you he's 
already paid the price for you. He loves you. He's willing to forgive you your sin. All you have to do is turn it in. Would you trust him today? After I pray, I'm going to turn it over to your pastor. But this morning is Christian. Make sure you've got these things in your mind. If you're not saved this morning, make sure you're willing to accept Christ today. Now, Heavenly Father, we're grateful this morning. Father, we thank you for what you allow us to do to be a part of. We thank you for the church, Lord. We pray to bless each one that's here this morning. Father, help us to examine our hearts as Christians. Are we, are we where we need to be? Are we living where we need to be? Are we like David? Are we standing on a foundation that, Father, you are God and your way is perfect? And, Father, your word is true and it's been tried. Are we trusting in you with our lives? And then this morning, Lord, I pray for one here that doesn't know Christ as Savior, that today will be the day to come to know you. We ask now that you bless the remainder of the service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Page 308, Matthew and